And let's bring in our man. Yeah. yeah. What's, yeah. Up, what's up? What's up? The head coach of the Sac State Hornets, Coach Andy Thompson. Coach, what's happening, man? Shoot, just getting ready for these Bobcats coming into town. So it's been a yeah. good week and enjoying my, my afternoon here. Beautiful how day. Different, how different is it for you guys getting ready, or is it different, getting ready for a game on ESPN versus, you know, just, just, just getting ready for a game each week? Um, you know, it's not too much different. It's a little later time slot, you know, about an hour long uh, later that night. So we'll do a little bit more uh, Saturday morning. Guys will get a little bit more rest Friday night. But, no, not too much different. We stick to the to the script. You know, we got a routine on how we've been doing things. Um, and we had a bunch of guys that are uh, dedicated to that, and, and they're getting better. And, and uh, it's going to be fun, man, number two yeah. against number three. So excited. This, this is the second year. Um that I can remember. Maybe, maybe they did it before that, but I know last year they had the big game uh, against Montana with Sac State. Um, they have this one with uh, with Montana State. They had one last week, Idaho and Montana, which was a, a fantastic finish and a great game. Talk about the spotlight that that conference is starting to get, and they're getting these national TV games on a regular basis on ESPN2, ESPN, and all this other stuff, not just the app. Talk about how big that is for your program and for the league. Yeah, I think I think it's 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 you're right. It's spot on. Last week that game drew more than any other game on ESPN two uh, mm. throughout the in, entire night. So uh, there's a lot of fan bases that are excited about you know Big Sky football, and and we've got one of them here. I think we finished third in in in, uh, in our conference in attendance last year, but I think we were like 12th overall. Uh, don't quote me on that specifically, but it's close. But I, what I'm saying is is there's a lot of people that are excited about. Um, FCS football and a chance to try to win a national championship. And in order to do that, you got to play games like this. And that's why a lot of these games guys came to Sac State is to play in big games. And this is definitely one of those games that, you know, is fun for our players and they earn the opportunity to, to make it a big game by what they've done so far this year. And how's your, how, how do you feel like the team's reacting to that stuff? Like each game you play gets a little bit bigger. You already, already had the Stanford game and now you got this, this big spotlight game here. Yeah. The, these guys love it. You know that. I mean, they, <laughs> if it's got cameras and it's, 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 it's exciting, you know, I mean, I, who wouldn't like it? Um, uh, guys work all year round, work hard in the off season, you know, those summer, you know, weightlifting sessions, getting up in the morning, doing all those things so that you can run out of a, uh, you know, a locker room and see a big crowd and have it be in friend, uh, in front of friends and family and, sure there's a lot of people that you know their family can't make it to but they're getting a chance to watch it on national tv so i don't know how you you wouldn't enjoy it and as coaches you know some coaches oh i don't care i love this i mean this is why you you're in the business i still i'm 43 but i got some competitive juices still you know and the chance to get to to uh, do it in front of a lot of people you got to take a lot of pride and and the biggest thing is you you got to put the work in before and i do think we've been doing that because it won't matter uh, if we don't go out there and, and do our job together and execute together. You know, Coach, I, I've I've watched some of these uh, other teams in the Big Sky. I've watched Montana um, when they played Davis. I watched them last week, obviously against Idaho. Mm -hmm. I watched uh, Idaho when you guys played against them, and then last week as well against Montana. I haven't seen much of Montana State, number two team in the nation. What what kind of uh, problems do they possibly pose for for you guys in this game? Okay, well, you you like the 49ers, right? Absolutely. Okay, the 49ers find nine million different ways to run the ball, right? doesn't matter who their quarterback is. They run the ball, and they're effective, and then they're effective with the passing game. These guys are number one in the nation in rushing, and they've got two quarterbacks uh, that can run the ball. Uh, one 6'4", 230 is a transfer from Wyoming. He's actually a California kid, uh, but he runs the ball. Chambers, he had 19 touchdowns last year. He's kept it going this year, and, and that's what they want to do. They want to run the football, and then they're, they've got a great defensive line. Um, and and our, we've got to be able to make plays in the passing game and be able to protect KB, let him run around, let him do his thing. And then on defense, we've got to be able to, you know, get some tackle for losses. So we got to we got to be able to play aggressive defense. So uh, And then they, they've been real solid in special teams. So, you know, all three of them, you know, for a record like that, you, you, you have to be good on all three units, but they, they want to run the football. Coach, you can't be too far behind in that uh, rushing total on the season, are you? No, we're we're there. We're we're a little more balanced. Actually, Caden Bennett's seventh in the country in total offense. So, you know, he's he's run and he's thrown it. Um, you know, last couple of weeks um, we have not run the ball a, as much. We've we've thrown it a little bit more, and, and we've got some good receivers. Gibson's you know gone over a hundred yards. 
Um, Carlos Hill had a big game last week. So we've had three receivers that have, you know, all had over 300 yards uh, total. So we, we're trying to be as balanced. We'll take whatever they want to give us. But, um, you know, definitely, you know, to win ball games at the end, you should be able to have to run the ball in the fourth quarter if you're ahead to, to finish that out. He talks about you being a 49ers fan. There's Eagles vibes, I think, to the Sac State offense and 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 how balanced you guys are and the way yeah. KB is, the way Ezra played. I think it was last yep. week. Yeah, um, I think he was near 100 yards. Like that. That that's that's strong Philadelphia Eagle vibes mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Definitely, both those teams have great depth, and you know we've had some some injuries. Uh, I don't know if Marcus Fulcher. I told him to come in and jump on here. We're hoping he gets back. You know, he's, he's been a mainstay here in our program and he's been a little banged up and we're hoping he comes back. Uh, but we've had, a you know, Ezra came in and did a great job. The great thing is when you talk about great teams is you got more than one guy that can do it. Right. And, and you got to have that depth because the season is long and there are injuries that creep up and you got to be ready to fill in and go. So we're hoping all the guys are, are back that can play and uh, definitely want to have all of our skill guys ready to roll. Hey, Coach, I'll, I'll go back just a little bit and talk about last week against Northern Colorado. Yep. And I coached a little bit um, mm -hmm. in high school, and you would have these games where, um, for instance, you're playing the top team in the league uh, on the, the following week. But this week, you know, you got to play one of the bottom teams in the league. Mm -hmm. and I just always would be nervous about those games because didn't want the players looking forward to the big game and overlooking a team that maybe didn't have a great record. Northern Colorado, I think they're still winless on yep. the season. But they they fought hard against you. That was a tough, tough game. Definitely. And I say all that to say, how happy are you that you guys were able to go out there, block out any noise that may be coming this week, focus on the task at hand, and come out of there with a victory? Yeah, you know, as a coach, that's what you never want to underachieve. You know, you don't you don't want your team to 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 uh, not play. And for us to get a win. That was the main goal. Do we have a lot of things that I could definitely come back in on Sunday and we we're like, hey, we need to improve this, this and this. And you got all of a sudden you got their attention, you know, and the guys are, are doing that. And I do think we we try to stay the same win or lose. I, you know, if you ask the players after Idaho, I didn't you know, I don't I don't come back and go crazy because we didn't win the game. It's, it's more about us and how we play. Yeah. And you have to have a standard and it takes everybody to do that standard. I will give credit to Northern. Colorado, they played extremely hard. They have scholarship players. They played an extremely difficult schedule, and uh, they played us tough. And we get a lot of people's best shot because, again, we have had some success. So learning to match that every week, learning to be consistent is part of the growth of our team, uh, part of the growth of me being a head coach. Um, and I'm, I'm learning every day. And I, I, same thing with our players. So we're hoping this week it can be our best performance because it's the next game. And uh, that's got to be a huge thing for the rest of the season because you can't – you're right. You can't ride the wave. Even though you don't want to, you got to try to be as consistent as you as you possibly can. Is there a position group or a player or a position that you asked to set the tone for you going into games? Yeah, I think up front you got to have that. You know, you, you, you've got to have some guys up front. And, uh, you know, we've got some veteran offensive linemen and defensive linemen. Jet Stanley's definitely doing that on the defensive line. Uh, Deshaun Lynch has been been very consistent with his – um, production on the defensive line. Both those guys have four and a half sacks and they're doing their thing. And then um, we got a couple of guys on the offensive line, uh, Slater, Mejia, and Garza. They've started now, I mean, almost 30 games. Uh, that trio now, the other two spots have had different guys in there, but I think your fronts always have to be able to come in and control the line of scrimmage. And that'll be huge for us on Saturday. I'm ready for this one, coach. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for this one. Uh, I, almost, I almost got into it on uh, on on Big Sky Twitter, where somebody oh, was like, Lord. <laughs> "Somebody was like, ah, Sac Don't State's overrated." I said, "Hold on, hold on, bro. What you talking about?" <laughs> yeah, I almost got into it on Big Sky Twitter. Hey, I <laughs> appreciate you. Yeah, you know, there's probably a spot in the end zone for you guys. I've seen you down there before. Oh, we going out. Yeah, coach, we coming through. I tell you, we're gonna be there for homecoming. Yeah, yeah I know we, we that. Coming for homecoming, we coach. ain't. We coming for we, homecoming. We might not miss homecoming ever again, coach. We'll, <laughs> hey, we're we'll gonna be there, there early for homecoming. Uh, appreciate you guys, man. You can find you us in the park. I hope all the Hornet fans are coming out this weekend. Yeah, it's gonna be a good turnout. It's gonna be a lot yeah. of fun out there. Yeah, they're Hornet gonna show stadium, out. Seven thirty kickoff. Get there early, man, because it's Let's gonna be packed. Go. Hey, coach, coach, baby. coach. Before we let you go, yeah, yeah what, what would you do about Steph Curry? <laughs> We're 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 just polling every coach out there. How would you? Does any coach have an idea how to stop Steph Curry from doing what he does? 
Oh yeah, you got to get up there and you got to do it like the Jordan rules a little bit. You got to do it a little more. <laughs> That's what you I'm know talking. What about. I mean, if, if he's playing me in pickup, I'm grabbing, I'm tugging, I'm making that official get tired of calling fouls on me, and then I'm bringing the next guy in. You know, I don't, I'm not dirty, but you know, you got to, you, you can't let him run wherever he wants to go. But problem with him is he's incredible shape. I got really? to watch that game seven last year, and that was, that was a crazy game. I'm, I'm a huge Kings fan. Uh, love it. I've, I definitely jumped on the bag wagon. Coach Brown's been awesome to us and he's great. But yeah, I think we got to have somebody that's willing to go in there and, you know, we got to be close to close. I think Mitchell's the guy though for the Kings. There he's a go. great defender. Get him right next to him, deny the ball, let everybody else shoot. That fails. Just send your front four at him. There we go. We can get there we go. There. Sign him to a 10 day. Yeah. Sign him to a 10 day. Hey, hey let's go you know coach. Let's go get that win on national TV, man. Yeah, we man. appreciate All you. Right. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me on.